In a drawer, there are blue socks, green socks, and yellow socks. If the lights are off, how many socks do you need to remove to guarantee you get a matching pair? Worst case scenario, you get one sock of each color on your first three draws. Then the fourth sock is guaranteed to be the same color as one of the three you've taken. So the minimum number of socks to guarantee a matching pair is four. This is a simple example of something known as the pigeonhole principle, which states that if you have more pigeons than holes, and you put every pigeon into a hole, there will be a hole with more than one pigeon. This seemingly obvious fact is actually a very powerful tool used in all sorts of mathematical proofs. And in this video, we'll look at three interesting problems and see how the pigeonhole principle can be applied to solve them. Start with a sphere of radius 1. Show that for any nine points on the surface of the sphere, you can always find a pair whose straight line distance apart is at most root 2. At first, this problem seems daunting, but there are some clues as to how we can use the pigeonhole principle to solve it. First, we should treat the points as pigeons and consider what eight holes we can put them into to guarantee some hole has two pigeons. Is there a natural way to break up a sphere into eight equal parts? There is. We can slice it using three perpendicular planes, and we get eight equal octants. Now, we can put a point on each octant, and then by the pigeonhole principle, the ninth must lie on the same octant as another point. So what's the farthest apart these points can be? Well, they would need to be at two corners, and then we would have a right triangle with two radii of the sphere, which have length one. So the distance is root two. And just like that, we've shown that for any nine points on the sphere, we can find a pair whose distance apart is at most root two. It's worth noting that nine points are sufficient, but not necessary to find a pair who are at most root two apart. It can actually be shown that five points are enough to guarantee this, and I'll leave that proof as an exercise to the viewer. Every point on an infinite grid will be colored red, blue, or yellow. Prove that you can always find a rectangle whose four corner points are the same color. If we want four points of the same color to form a rectangle, we first need to find two same color points aligned vertically. Then if we find the same pair of points aligned horizontally, we'll have our desired rectangle. Similar to the sock example, we only need four points to guarantee that two of them will be the same color. So any column of four points will have a pair of same color points. Now if we ever find two identical columns aligned horizontally, that will create our desired rectangle. So all we need to do is make enough columns to guarantee that two of them will be identical. How many unique columns can we make? Well, there are three options for the first point, and three options for the second point, and the same for the third and fourth. Therefore, there are 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, or 81, possible unique columns. So we just need one more column, 82, to guarantee that there's a duplicate somewhere, and those identical columns will create the rectangle. It's worth noting that 82 is, again, sufficient but not necessary to create a monochromatic rectangle, because by the time you get to 82, there will already be some rectangles created by columns that are not identical but share a sufficient pair of points. Start with the set of integers from 1 to 100. For any subset of 10 numbers, show that you can always find a pair of disjoint subsets whose elements have the same sum. We already know we're going to use the pigeonhole principle, so we just need to figure out what are the pigeons and what are the holes. Since we want to show that there will always be two subsets with the same sum, it seems like the subsets will be our pigeons and the sums will be our holes. So we just need to show that there are more possible subsets than possible sums, which would mean that there are at least two subsets with the same sum. To count the number of possible subsets, we consider the possibilities for each element when making a subset. The first element can either be included or excluded. For each possibility, the second element could either be included or excluded. For each of those, the third could be included or excluded, and so on. For each new element, the number of possible subsets doubles. Therefore, there are 2 to the n possible subsets for a set with n elements. So the number of possible subsets from a 10 element set is 2 to the 10th, or 1024. We actually only want to consider non-empty subsets, so we should subtract the empty set. The highest possible sum is the sum of the 10 highest numbers, 91 through 100, which will be less than 100 times 10, or 1000. Therefore, there are fewer than 1000 possible sums. 
Since there are fewer than a thousand possible sums, but more than a thousand possible subsets, there must be at least two subsets with the same sum. But we're still missing something. The subsets need to be disjoint. So what happens if the same number appears in both subsets? Well, we can actually just remove it. Since we're subtracting the same thing from both sides, the sums will still be equal. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or requests for future video topics, please feel free to leave a comment. That's all for now.